Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, today we're talking about the brand new HBO Max series, Peacemaker, which just had a three episode debut on HBO Max. And this series, of course, follows John Cena starring as Christopher Smith, aka Peacemaker, a character we were first introduced to in The Suicide Squad from last year. And now this story follows his character and his journey towards redemption and also see him interact with other characters from the Suicide Squad as well as new characters as well. Like for example, we got Vigilante in here who's amazing, Judo Master, a whole bunch of other crazy stuff going on here. Uh, so we got the first three episodes, we're going to be talking about all three of them today. Full spoilers for the whole episode, all three episodes, and the post credit scenes, so if you haven't seen them yet, Stay tuned for those post credit scenes. And um, yeah, so without further ado, spoiler warning if you're not using the first three episodes of Peacemaker on HBO Max. And let's jump into this. So Peacemaker episode one is called A Whole New World. And world is spelled W-H-I-R-L-E-D. So pretty much I'm thinking at least just based off these first three episodes, all the episode titles will be like some sort of like, you know, famous thing that you like, like like an expression you hear all the time but with one of the words being spelt different like this one you know usually world would be whole new world w-o-r-l-d but this time it's world in a different way so yeah definitely got a lot of whirling going on in this and this first episode was great i think it's probably the best of the three um and there's a lot going on here like for example we get our first look at the opening credit sequence for this um the intro for peacemaker is very interesting because um not even gonna lie, you know, usually I skip the opening credits for most things, especially on streaming services when you can just click a button and boom, it skips it. But this, all three episodes, I stayed through to it because I, it's the whole cast dancing and it just feels like an 80s music video. Like seeing John Cena dance around like that and seeing Vigilante do that. And then even, even like a serious character like uh, Clemson Mern seeing him dance in hardcore and uh, it was just so hilarious and fits so so well with this series so i absolutely love the opening credits here but as for the episode itself it starts off basically continuing where we left off with the character of peacemaker at the end of the suicide squad where that post credit scene revealed that he was actually alive and he was in the hospital and now he's being recruited by um a new crew assembled by amanda waller to uh save the world once again so when we start off with Peacemaker in this episode, he's in the hospital and basically shows him escaping. We, we, you see him run into a janitor that apparently he, he was hanging out with before. And, you know, you get some cool references of like Aquaman in here, um, not being very, not using very kind words about Aquaman, but still they mention him. Um, and of course he's like, Peacemaker, what kind of superhero name is Peacemaker? And like, it, it was super funny. Um, so that was great. So he escapes the hospital, but... Now, the rest of the team has to officially assemble and basically go recruit him to this new world-saving mission. So, Peacemaker, uh, once he gets out of the hospital, he basically breaks out of there. Um, he has no money, so he gets in a, in a taxi, and the way he pays the taxi driver is actually by giving him his helmet. So, um, there goes Peacemaker Helmet 1.0, I guess. Um, and then he can't even get it, get into his trailer, so he's got to break the window and climb in there. Um, and he has a bunch of voicemails from Vigilante, who's like thinks he's his best friend and is like number one fan at the same time so um, I'm loving Vigilante so far we didn't really get much of him in episode one but still um, cool getting a little setup for him there um, and then of course Clemson, Harcourt, e Economos, and Adebayo all surround him and hire him for this new mission their new team and he really has no choice here because he still has the bomb in, in his neck from the Suicide Squad so he kind of has to go along with this so he's like all right I'll do it but first I need to go get my sidekick. And they're like, oh, who's your sidekick? Eagly. So yeah, we got his pet eagle, Eagly. So he goes to visit his father so that he can secure the eagle. And uh, I mean, his father is like so bad. Like he's so mean to him, just makes fun of him the whole time, um, calls him pathetic and all this stuff. And he's just like not a good guy. And of course, given the reveal at the end of episode two, Kind of makes sense, uh, but we'll talk about that when we get to it. Uh, but then also we find out that actually they have like this full-on secret Peacemaker HQ inside his house with like a dozen different helmets that do a whole bunch of different things. He's also got a Peacemaker mobile. Um, so anyway, yeah, Peacemaker, he gets a new helmet, he gets the new suit, and he gets Peacemaker mobile and Eagly, of course, and he heads off to meet up with the team for dinner. And then after dinner... Uh, Peacemaker drives off, but follows Harcourt into a bar, 
um, where the guy's in there just being creepy and weird to her. And so she beats them up and Peacemaker's like, dang, she's hot. Which, I mean, yeah, I, I agree. Um, also James Gunn's girlfriend, by the way. So, um, congratulations, James Gunn's. But, um, yeah, so after this, he's like, hey, you want to have a little fun with me? Um, and you know what he means when, when he says have a little fun. Um, and obviously she's not into that. Um, but you know, I do feel like something's being set up there. Not just a one-time thing, but an actual romantic relationship. And we see that especially in episode three. Um, but so since she won't do it with him, um, after she leaves, um, he ends up hooking up with some other random lady at the bar. So there, there's that. Um, I guess Peacemaker got, got his little bit of fun in there. I mean, he's been in prison for four years, so... Um, you know, he, he, it's probably good for him to be getting out there again, I guess. But meanwhile, let's talk about some members of the team, specifically Adebayo. Because she's the rookie. She's the new member of the team. She's new to this whole position. Um, and she's really, I think, honestly, the most interesting character on the team, obviously, other than Peacemaker himself. Um, because, um, she has a girlfriend that's concerned about her job being too dangerous and stuff. And so... She's actually on a Zoom call with Amanda Waller in this episode. So we get a cameo from Viola Davis as Amanda Waller, which was great. We heard rumors about it. Ended up being true. So she's in this episode. That was great seeing um, her back in this role. Um, but it turns out she has a bigger plan that the others don't know about. And Adebayo is the only one she truly trusts because she's her daughter. So Amanda Waller is Adebayo's mom, which is, again, another thing I knew about previously, but I think makes a lot of sense. It's going to be, and it's going to be really cool um, seeing that explored in the series, especially when you get that reveal with the other characters where they're going to be like, whoa, she's your mom and like all this stuff. So I think that's going to be really cool and I'm excited to see that. But then we go back to John Cena's Peacemaker, um, who of course just had um, a great time, great night with that lady. Uh, but then she just goes crazy and starts trying to kill him. So, of course, just like in the Suicide Squad, we get some more John Cena tidy whitey action here. Uh, but this time for a fight scene. Um, and it starts off with him literally just, like, dancing in the living room. And then all of a sudden she comes at him with a knife. So we get this crazy knife fight. He ends up escaping to his car, puts on his helmet, which, again, all these different helmets have, like, different powers or something like that. Which, you know, is a little weird. I'm not quite sure how to feel about it, but at the same time it was really cool. Um, and he literally says like activate sonic boom his helmet makes a sonic boom and it kills her it literally obliterates her um in a very gory fashion which is something you can do in this mature rating and that's how the episode ends and this is where peacemaker kind of gets more invested in this whole world saving mission because he's like whoa what are these butterflies is that one of her i i just did things with her am i gonna become a vampire butterfly thing and like he's got so many questions here um and that's where episode one ends and of course like i said there is a postcard scene there's gonna be uh james gonna confirm there's gonna be a postcard scene for every single episode of this season i did a video on that like last week um turns out the postcard scenes aren't really like extra scenes like setting up anything it seems more like deleted scenes so it's not really like anything we need to talk about i mean this first one is just it really does feel like a deleted scene with peacemaker's dad talking about him with the helmets and then it's the same with the other two postcard scenes. It's really just like funny deleted scenes. Um, but still cool. I, I I do appreciate that, you know, they have that at the end of the episode. I think that's really nice. Uh, but now let's talk about episode two of Peacemaker titled Best Friends for Never. And this is where we, of course, follow up right after episode one because Peacemaker's going crazy. He's freaking out. He's like, again, he just did things with that crazy butterfly lady. So he's calling hardcore. The team assembles. And so they all get together, try to make a plan, try to figure out what's going on there. And yeah. So we really get to see some nice team dynamics here and see the relationship is between these characters. Um, Peacemaker, of course, is a douche. So not really any of them like him, except for Adebayo. She... I don't know if I say she likes him, but she can definitely tell that there's something sad about him that, like, he's not in a good spot. Uh, but I do love how we actually get a really cool Batmite reference as well um, from John Economos when he's um, stitching up Peacemaker. He says something about, I I'd rather be with Harley Quinn than you. I'd rather be with Weasel than you. I'd rather be with Batmite than you. And, of course, Peacemaker's like, oh, who who's Batmite? And Economos is like, oh, he's like this two-foot-tall... 
uh, fifth dimensional imp who's like a Batman stand. And so that was awesome just seeing um, a reference to Batmite in the DCU because James Gunn has said he's a huge fan of that character. He wanted to have him in the Suicide Squad. Uh, but now that we have an actual reference here, it's interesting how John Economos knows who Batmite is and that he exists in this universe. So does that mean he's somehow on the radar of Amanda Waller and the Suicide Squad? Does that mean we could possibly see him pop up in the next Suicide Squad movie, whether that's as a villain of the squad or as a member? I don't know, but I sure hope so because I think that would be really, really cool. But after this, Peacemaker is... You get to see a more vulnerable side of him because he goes back home to his trailer and he literally just cries like a baby. And they released this clip a couple days ago and I watched it and when I was first watching it, I was like, oh, that's just like overacting and like it looks ridiculous and everything. But at the same time, it doesn't. It, it does kind of feel real as well because, you know, think about this guy being super serious and, you know, keeping up this persona of Peacemaker and now just finally letting it all out. It is going to be like ugly crying like this. And then I love how he, of course, mentions the death of Rick Flagg and how he killed Rick Flagg in the Suicide Squad. And he repeats that line, Peacemaker, what a joke. And he, he's just crying and crying again because we are going to be getting this redemption story for this character. So I like how things are being set up slowly but surely. Like you can see this hesitance and see how specifically killing Rick Flag has changed this character. Um and then all of a sudden our emotional moment here is interrupted as Vigilante appears at his window. Um we get some more great funny moments there. They go out, go out in the woods and just start shooting a bunch of stuff, uh which is pretty funny how they were as they were shooting stuff and had this whole crazy action montage. Um, how they were playing a One Direction song. It was sung by somebody else, but it's just One Direction song. I thought that was funny. And after this, Peacemaker and Vigilante actually have a a threesome with some again some random ladies. So they're they're just finding ladies all over the place. And then the crazy device that Peacemaker found in the other woman's apartment earlier, um, in the episode. It's like it's got hieroglyphics like some sort of weird ancient symbols on it and it starts glowing and all of a sudden it transforms into like this mini spaceship. So that's kind of a cliffhanger left off there which is um, interesting to see where things are going to go. But then what's even more interesting is the big cliffhanger of this episode relating to Peacemaker's dad because um, earlier in the episode of course the cop showed up when Peacemaker was at the hotel and you know that lady... Uh, like basically blew up and everything so they're looking for her murderer and so Economos was able to frame Peacemaker's dad as the one that was at the hotel that killed that lady so he and he ends up getting arrested and at the end of the episode when he goes to prison the prisoners all bow down to him and say all hail the white dragon and White Dragon is a character from the comics. This is a DC Comics character. Um, in the comics, he, he's not Peacemaker's dad. He and Peacemaker are actually like not related at all. Um, but there are both Nazis, so I guess James Gunn just kind of like, um, molded the two characters together. I guess, which I mean, it works. It works pretty well. Um, and it's just so interesting because there's not really much to know about the character of White Dragon from the comics. Like he's a white supremacist. He's super racist. And, um, just, I mean, basically, you, you see, you've seen what he's like in the show. He's a, he's really a bad guy. And now the fact that he's in prison and has, like, this crazy cult that's f just following him. Like, I have no idea what's going to go on here. I highly doubt that we're actually going to see him, like, suit up in a crazy white dragon costume like it has in the comics. Then again, that would be cool. Um, but just given, like, the age of the actor, I, I doubt he's going to be involved in any crazy fight scenes. Uh, but I will be interested to see, like, how he plays into this, especially since now he's in prison. Is he going to be connected to the butterflies? Or, I don't know. I'm not really sure here. I'm definitely interested to find out. But um, another thing to mention, though, is that when he's brought in there, the warden says, I thought we sent capes to Arkham Asylum. And they say something about Arkham Asylum was full. So that's a cool Arkham Asylum reference. But also, they mention capes. So in the show, basically, when the police reference capes, I'm pretty sure they're just referring to, like, metahumans, people with superpowers. So she's referring to Peacemaker's father. So clearly, he has some sort of superpowers here. I'm just not exactly sure what they are. Possibly mind control, because... I mean, literally just all these guys just all of a sudden walk over and bow down to him. Specifically, only the white inmates, though. That is another interesting thing to know. But that is the big cliffhanger for Peacemaker Episode 2. Another great episode. And then that transitions to Episode 3, Better Goth Dead. 
So this is an interesting episode because we finally have the team assembling and going on a mission here because the team assembles, Vigilante, he wants to join, Clemson says no. So the squad, minus Vigilante, they go after Target. And this Target is U.S. Senator Roland Goff. Now, the problem is he's, of course, been taken over by the butterflies, so that's why they need to eliminate him. But they're not sure if his wife and kids are butterflies as well, so Clemson says, all right, we just got to kill them all anyway. And it's interesting, again, how Peacemaker hesitates here, and he's like, wait, you, you, you want me to kill the kids? Especially considering, like, his whole catchphrase is, I'm willing to get, like, no matter what the cost, no matter how many men, women, or children I have to kill whatever I have to do to get peace, like, the, he's gonna do it, but it's interesting how he hesitates here, like, he doesn't want to kill these kids, uh, but now he's gonna have to, so they go to take out the target, we have Judo Master as the target's bodyguard, another, uh, DC comic superhero, and they miss the shot, basically, Peacemaker, like, he, he's getting ready to, to shoot this Roland Goff guy, um, when they have the shot, when they're getting out of their car, getting out, going into their house, but they missed the shot, because there, there was no clear shot there, so, now they gotta wait, and as they wait, we have this great scene between Christopher Smith, aka Peacemaker, and Amelia Harcourt out there, who are, like, basically on the stakeout mission, just getting ready to assassinate these people, and they're out there, and you got this romantic music playing, and then you just got them staring at each other, having this nice conversation, reminiscing on memories, you know, you, you can see the sparks flying, they are so clearly setting up a romance between these two characters, and it's not at all something I was expecting to see in this series, having Peacemaker have a love interest, let alone it being Amelia Harcourt, but you know what, I love it, I'm into it, I, I'm liking it, and I, I really want to see them get together, I think they'd be a nice couple. But, of course, the mood is interrupted, again, by Vigilante, who apparently followed them there. So he just pops up out of nowhere. And then the family, um, we basically get confirmation that they're all butterflies because they stick out their butterfly tongues and start sucking nectar out of a bowl, which was disgusting but also cool at the same time. So Peacemaker won't kill them because since they're all butterflies, he has to kill all four of them. But... Peacemaker won't do it. He won't kill the kids. So Vigilante's like, all right, get out of the way. I'm going to do it. So he starts shooting all of them. He shoots the wife first, then the kids. And then as he's about to shoot Papa Bear, as they're referring him to with the, the Bernstein Bears reference, Bernstein Bears reference, um, which I'll be honest, I, I always thought it was Bernstein Bears, but no, apparently it was Bernstein. Huh. I mean, you learn something new every day, but yeah. So Basically, the guy, the main target here is the one who survives, and because it, he's interrupted when Judo Master attacks him. And, I mean, Judo Master, I'm not a big fan of his outfit because it looks so similar to TDK from the Suicide Squad. Um, but at the same time, it is a cool looking outfit, um, but he's very not intimidating. I mean, he's wearing a bright green neon outfit and is, like, super short, but he's so badass because he takes down both Peacemaker and Vigilante so easily and so quickly. So then he takes both of them into the house where we see them now underground in an almost kind of cocoon basement type thing. And this is where Goff then interrogates Peacemaker as he tortures Vigilante. And of course, Peacemaker's like, all right, don't worry, I'm not going to tell him anything, even though, you know, Vigilante is the one that's being tortured. So of course he doesn't care. But on the outside, we have the rest of the team trying to get in there, so Clemson Murn ends up blowing open the cocoon basement door, and Peacemaker's free to then kill Goff and, um, you know, do all that stuff and save the day. Meanwhile, Judo Master is trying to escape, so um, Economos runs him over, and, you know, he's still alive at this point, so he grabs a crowbar and just starts beating him in the head. And Ekin almost kills Judo Master, which, I mean, is, hey, it's cool. Like, probably got to be a good confidence booster for Ekin almost, especially him being the tech guy. Like, you know, actually defeating the Judo Master who just took down Vigilant and Peacemaker. But also at the same time, I really wish they didn't kill the character. But I also don't know for sure if he's dead. He could have just been knocked out. But then again, I don't know for sure. But I am pretty sure that I saw in one of the trailers a shot of Judo Master that we did not see here. Um, uh, another shot of him fighting Peacemaker, so I'm hoping he's still alive. I don't know for sure, um, but that's what happens here. Uh, Ekin almost gets this great confidence boost, but things are not good for long because then a butterfly pops out of the exploded head of Goff, 
and just gets up and flies away. And we then pan the camera over to a screen within the uh, the van that Economos was working out of where it says that basically butterflies have been popping up. There's like hundreds upon thousands of butterflies across the world. So this truly is a world-saving mission. And that is where we end, ladies and gentlemen, Peacemaker, the first three episodes on HBO Max. And man, this was great. I love these episodes. You know, obviously it's... Not always great waking up at 3 in the morning to watch these shows, but I had a fun time doing this. You know, it continues the vibe and the maturity and just the whole tone of The Suicide Squad, which I absolutely love that movie, and of course develops more on this character of Christopher Smith, aka Peacemaker, and it's just so good. It's just such a fun series because it's not only violent and action-packed, but it's also super-duper funny, and also they have those serious emotional moments as well. Like, you even have a moment in here with uh, Clemson Mern where he mentions, like, he's, like, never like expressed his feelings before because of his background and his past and he clearly has a dark past and everything so you have some great moments in here it's just th this series is a lot of fun um three episodes in and i'm already loving it it's an eight episode series or at least season and so i'm excited to see where things go in these final five episodes or just the next five episodes because there's a lot of cool stuff set up here with the butterflies with peacemaker's father being the white dragon and of course all these other characters that have now been introduced especially vigilante i'm loving vigilante he's like a he's very much like a deadpool type character he, he's great I, I love him but guys let me know your thoughts in the comments below what did you think about the three episode debut of peacemaker on hbo max did you like it did you not like it let me know all your your thoughts, theories, and predictions in the comments below. And as always, thanks so much for watching. Please drop a like if you enjoyed this video and hit the subscribe button so I can keep up to date on everything goes on in the DC life. Mm.